Hi, my name is Sharon Chen, and I'm a pediatric infectious disease physician at Stanford University. In this video, I'm going to describe to you some of the different strategies that microbes use to persist in the host. This video is part of the Introduction to Microbiology series. After colonizing a niche, the microbe must figure out how to persist long enough to replicate and then exit the host. It is not so easy to persist because the body's immune response is attacking the microbe. So they have evolved many strategies to avoid and hide from the immune system. The learning objectives are to describe different strategies used by pathogens to avoid clearance by the immune system, to explain different mechanisms by which pathogens extract critical nutrients for survival within a host, and to explain some of the ways intracellular pathogens survive inside cells. Many microbes avoid clearance by the immune system by invading into a cell. This is true of all viruses, but there are also bacteria and parasites that will actively invade a cell to persist in an intracellular niche. For example, in this movie, you can see a bacterium called Listeria monocytogenes, which invaded this epithelial cell and is now hiding and replicating safely in the cytosol. By hiding inside the cell, Listeria can't be cleared by antibody immune responses. In the movie, you can see Listeria is not only hiding, but moving around inside the cell, which allows them to push their way into a neighboring cell without being exposed to the outside. All of this allows Listeria to persist. Instead of hiding within a cell, some bacteria produce mucopolysaccharide capsules that surround and hide them. Capsules prevent white blood cells from engulfing or phagocytosing bacteria and prevent antibodies and complement from attaching to and clearing bacteria. A third way to avoid clearance by the immune system is not to hide the surface antigens, but to continually change them. This is called antigenic variation. For example, these red squiggles here represent drapanosomes, which is a type of parasite that infects blood. It can persist for a long time. One way that it can persist is to change its surface proteins by random shuffling of genes that encode the proteins. The blue trypanosome that you can see has a different surface protein and can't be detected by the antibodies produced against the red trypanosome. Because of this, the blue trypanosomes are not cleared and continue to grow until new antibodies against blue trypanosomes clears them. Let me tell you about another way to avoid clearance by the immune system. Some viruses are able to modulate the immune system by producing mimics of immune proteins such as cytokines and cytokine receptors. I'm going to use a cartoon to illustrate this point. The red structure that you see here is a receptor for TNF-alpha on an immune cell. The green ball represents TNF-alpha, a type of cytokine. Binding of TNF-alpha to the receptor sets off a cascade of intracellular signaling, allowing the immune cell to then respond to infection. Some viruses enslave the infected cell to produce a soluble receptor, the blue structure that you see, that looks like the real receptor. The mimic receptor can also bind TNF-alpha. Now TNF-alpha doesn't bind to its real receptor and its effect is neutralized. The process that I just described is a type of immune modulation. Another way of avoiding detection and clearance by the immune system is to persist in a location that has low surveillance by immune cells. For example, varicella zoster virus persists in the neuronal cells of the dorsal root ganglion, which is part of the spinal cord, as you can see from the drawing. Varicella zoster virus can avoid being detected by immune cells in this location, and this type of persistence is termed latency. Latency is a phase in the virus where it's dormant, no viral replication is occurring. However, viral replication can occur again, and we call this reactivation. For varicella zoster virus, reactivation of the virus and travel to the skin via sensory nerves results in a dermatomal rash called shingles. For microbes to persist in a host, they not only have to avoid being killed by the immune system, but they also need to figure out how to acquire the things they need to stay alive. For example, bacteria require certain micronutrients, like iron, in order to stay alive. Iron is sequestered by the human body and not readily available. So bacteria that can persist in the host have overcome this by several means, and I'm going to explain each way. Bacteria can produce molecules like siderophores and siderophore receptors. Siderophores bind iron tightly and steal the iron from the host. Siderophore receptors can then take up the iron. 
The host can produce lactoferrin and transferrin, which also bind iron tightly to prevent microbes from getting the iron. Because of this, some bacteria will even make receptors to lactoferrin and transferrin in order to steal more iron from the host.